<coughs> All right, so this one we've got a um, light plane, the wing spar. We've got distributed load on this wing spar. <coughs> it's made up of um, aluminum, has cross-sectional area of 1.27 inches squared, a depth of 3 inches. Moment of inertia, about the neutral is 2.68. Determine the absolute maximum bending stress in the spar if the anticipated loading is to be shown. <coughs> Assume A, B, C are pins. Okay, so we want to find the maximum bending stress. To find the maximum bending stress, M, Y over I, we need to find the maximum M. Well, where's the maximum M? Is it here, 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 here? <coughs> Let's draw. And sometimes, even if it's not um, asked for, it might be helpful to draw the shear and moment diagram. Because from that moment diagram, clearly you can see where the maximum <coughs> moment is and the value of the maximum moment. So that's what I want to do first, is to draw the shear and moment diagram. Look at it that moment diagram and find the maximum moment and use it for the my over i to find the <coughs> maximum bending stress all right so let's see here we've got this distributed load um and so from kind of my statics at a i might have so let me kind of draw this a little bit better right here so at a i've got a pin so i might have an a y and an AX, I've got that this distributed load <coughs> that I could replace with one force at one third closer to the taller height, <coughs> and this would be <coughs> one half base times height. Now let me look at these units here though. The base is nine feet, but the height is 80 <coughs> pounds per inch. Uh, so I need to convert feet and inches right there. I think that one would give me pounds. Yeah. Uh, so 4320 <coughs> right here. So if I've got 4320 and then here I've got force C. Why do I draw it right there? <coughs> because it's a two force member. It's pin and pin. We know that the forces at those uh, along those two force members are in the direction pin to pin. So we don't know its magnitude, but we do know its direction right there. Okay, so from statics, <coughs> statics, we can sum the forces <coughs> in x equals zero. AX minus uh, the two, three, three point six. <coughs> the X would be the three over three point six equals zero. I don't think that's going to help us. So I probably should just start it with let's sum the forces <coughs> in the Y direction. It'd be AY plus forty three twenty. Minus uh, F, the 2 over 3.6 component, equals 0. Uh, and I probably should have started with the moments. So some of the moments about A. <coughs> so some of the moments about A. 4320 is acting 3 feet away, creating a positive moment. <coughs> but then F, the 2 over 3.6 component is acting 3 feet away, creating a negative moment. FCB is oh, <coughs> yeah, 7, 77, 88 pounds, right there. Plug that back in up there. AY is actually 0. All right, so <coughs> AY is 0, F, C, B, 70, 77, 88 pounds. So now we can draw the shear and the moment diagram. All right, shear diagram. <coughs> Immediately, it sees 0. Uh, so I <coughs> hop on there at 0, and I, I stay at 0. 
<coughs> and then this distributed load is pushing it up pretty good and then it's still pushing it up until it gets to let's say here uh, what value did that <coughs> go up well it went up by this distributed load right here it went up by that distributed load that area would be uh, 80 let's see well we've got to figure out that uh, height right here the height right here <coughs> we can look at similar triangles 80 over 9 would be H over 6 80 over 9 over 6. <coughs> Excuse me. So H would be 53.33. So here I'm trying to find the area of a trapezoid. On the left hand side the height is 80. The right hand side the height is 53.3. <coughs> Alright. So the average height times the base of 3. I think I have to multiply times 12 because <clears throat> pounds per inch and this is in feet so convert feet to inch there we've got pounds anyway all, all that to get 2400 right here all right all that to get <clears throat> 2400 right here all right how did it get there what shape did it take well it's being pushed up pretty steeply and it was still being pushed up so it, it's, it's kind of that shape. It has a positive slope of 80, but still a positive slope. Maybe exaggerated this. Uh, it still has a positive slope right there. So there's the, the V. Then immediately, <coughs> I'm only concerned with the vertical. Uh, so I'm only concerned with this 77, 88, the 2 over 3.6 component, which would bring it down by 4320 so if I was at 2400 and this component right there brings remember that distributed load up it's 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 back here it's it's acting everywhere not just right there but <clears throat> this bar CB is acting right there I need to only look at the vertical component for <coughs> that affects my V diagram and I would come down 43.20, so I'd be at negative 19.20. Then I would come up <coughs> by <coughs> this area, one-half base times height. If I'm lucky, yes, it would be 19.20. So I'm back at zero. How did it go up? Well, it was being pushed up pretty steeply. Then it has a slope of zero, so it would be this curve right here, that shape right there. So that's the V diagram. <clears throat> the moment diagram, start at zero. I'm looking for three things. I'm looking for the moment, um, just an applied moment, a concentrated moment, anywhere. I don't have any of those in my figure. So then the other two things I'm looking for is the area under the curve <coughs> and V is the slope of M. Area under the curve and V is the slope of M. This area right here, I know that's an X squared. And I told you that you could use one-third B times H <coughs> or two-thirds B times H, but that's only for the area that starts with a slope of zero or ends with a slope of zero. This starts with a slope of 80, ends with a slope of 53.3. I can't use one-third or two-thirds B H to find that area. Uh, but, I don't know. I mean, I know it's going to be up here positive, uh, but I don't know that value. <coughs> How about this? How about I look at it from the other side? How about I look at it from the other side? This one is a, a <coughs> an x squared. <coughs> Excuse me. This one is an x squared that starts at, um, or sorry, it ends with a slope of zero. So this one, and you see this is the smaller <coughs> area of it. So this one is one third base of six, height nineteen twenty right here. If I want to do some unit conversion, multiply times 12 so that I'm in pounds and inches. 
This one would be <clears throat> 46080 pound inches. And so that is how I'm going to find this value, 46080 pound inches right here. <clears throat> now, what shape did it get to take there? Well, V is the slope of M. Okay, not, not the slope of V. So not this 80, sorry, and 53.3. Hmm. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the value right here, ah, okay, we're going to get through this. The value right here is zero. The <coughs> value right here is 2400. This starts with a slope of zero and comes up to a slope of 2400. Then it begins, it goes with a slope of negative. I shouldn't go below there. <coughs> it starts with a negative slope. One more time. <coughs> Right there. All right, so there's my <coughs> there's my moment diagram. Right there. <coughs> I did all of that just to get to 